Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch You Want, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're looking at a bit of a rarity, the Jejer Lecoult Master World Geographic. 41.5 millimeters in stainless steel, this new for 2006 complicated watch was a relatively short-lived reference in the JLC catalog, although it has phenomenal complication, all manufacturer produced, although it's something of a rarity itself as a complication featuring both a second time zone and a world time feature. This is a watch that I love, but I rarely see, so I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to put it on the wrist and present it to you. I really feel that this watch punches above its weight. It has the impact of a top shelf complication from a Patek Philippe or an Audemars Piguet for a fraction of the price. That classical silver on silver dress watch look with multiple subdials, a power reserve, a second time zone, AM PM indicator, and a Louis Cotier style world time function make this watch an outstanding value and a real visual stunner, especially in the flesh. Now on my wrist, it features what's known as the 146 case. I want to emphasize that during the 2000s, the one seemingly unifying thread at JLC was that number 146 case, and I, I call it that based on the case back reference number, which starts with 146, and then dot, and then there's the metal code, and then the dot, and then the movement code. But that 146 case that you see here had very thick, very heavy lugs. On the wrist, it wears nice. It wears small. I would say it wears roughly true to size, but it looks like a 43. It looks like a 44. It's got real stance, real presence. It's broad, it's heavy, it's substantial, and it's got serious authority. You can see in the profile, the 146, which was used from everything from the humble sub $10,000 master compressor time only and date to the awesome $92,000 Grand Memovox and Platinum. The 142 has got a lot of personality, a lot of character. This is a watch that I think is defined aesthetically by that broad silver dial and the strength of the lugs. The lugs are large, full-bodied. You can see they hardly taper off. There's almost no tumble home to these lugs toward the size. They don't really taper that much end to end, and they certainly don't round off when viewed in profile like this. They give this watch a masculine strength that is uncommon in a pure silver dial white metal dress watch. Now, it, as I mentioned earlier, the watch features two time zones, a power reserve, a date, a radial date right at 3 o'clock, as well as a world time complication. So what you have are the 24 reference cities positioned around the circumference, and then you have a counterclockwise rotating 24-hour AM PM shaded time reference ring. And the idea is that the index is located at 6 o'clock, and that's, that's a key point of reference for any world time watch. Where do you set your reference city so that you can then correctly reference the time in all of the other cities? Here it's 6 o'clock, make no mistake, as indicated by the red triangular index at 6. Now the reference time itself can be set with respect to the world time. Um, it can be set in sync with the center uh, hands, so you can get effectively AM, PM indications for the, for the center time, the reference time, or it can be set independently, so you can effectively have two separate time zones and then a simultaneous representation of all the time zones. Why would you want that? Well, principally so you can make easy reference to that second time zone that you're tracking, while with a little bit more effort, you have all the other time zones, the other 22 time zones of the world, visible circumferentially. Now, there is a 42-hour power reserve in this watch. It uses JLC caliber 936, bi-directional automatic winding. It's an, a manufacture movement, very smooth, very refined, uses a contemporary 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate. but because the watch has a number of complex subsidiary indications, the date, the world time, the reference time, and the local time, you're able to track the state of wine so that if for whatever reason, if you take it off your wrist for a day, the power reserve is going to be there to let you know how close you are to bottoming out. You don't necessarily want to have to reset a watch like this too often, although it is easy to do. So the power reserve is a nice touch and a practical measure added by JLC. Now aesthetically, there is a good deal of color despite the fact that this is a very silver intensive aesthetic. Splashes of blue, splashes of red, that gorgeous heat blued center seconds hand, all the subdial hands, the calibrations on the world time, the index, the power reserve, and the radial date. 
they add a little bit of personality, a little bit of a sense of jovial fun to the watch. This watch is not as coldly clinical as some all silvered white metal, white dial watches can be, and I like that. It's endearing, it brings the watch to life in my eyes, it softens it a little bit, and it provides a nice counterpoint to the sheer visual mass of these awesome 146 case lugs. And now on the case back, you can see the JLC classic circular Cote de Genève. You can see all of the cobalt heat blued screws. This is a technique that JLC remastered in-house in the late 1980s. Uh, they degraded to the point during the quartz crisis that they were having trouble even keeping basic artisanal skills alive, and they basically started a Manhattan Project in the late 80s to revive these skills, and references like this Master World Geographic embody everything that they relearned and retaught themselves, in some cases simply by going to their wall of movements and their drawers full of their old ancestral watches and reacquiring lost artisanal skills. Uh, I will add, I'm actually going to correct myself, this is unidirectional winding. I see the unidirectional uh, reversing wheel, single wheel right there. So this is actually one of the auto-tractorized later references in the series of movements based on the, the famed 889 caliber. So unidirectional, and I'm going to see, yep, this also includes the ceramic rotor bearings. Unlubricated, highly efficient, they provide essentially sealed for life service in the winding rotor, eliminating one of the principal sources of wear and tear on an automatic movement. Now JLC has tested this system. The unidirectional winding with the ceramic rotor bearings is not only more effective at winding the watch on the wrist, but I should mention that they've tested the ceramic rotor bearings through a cycle of 1.5 million rotations without any visible wear on the balls themselves. So just as a mechanical watch is pretty much a lifetime purchase, a transgenerational purchase, JLC is taking the components to that level with the caliber 936 in this Master World Geographic. And this is an outstanding example of a very uncommon watch. JLC has ramped up its production to the point where it now builds about 70,000 watches per year, but I would have to think that given how few of these I've seen, in spite of the fact that I basically look at JLCs and luxury watches in general all day, every day, and this is the first one that I've encountered in the metal. So this is a rare opportunity to buy a watch in outstanding condition with supremely practical complications from one of the premier manufacturers in all of Swiss high horology. You can see it on our website, Watch You Want, in outstanding condition with original factories, factory boxes, technical manuals, papers, provenance and accessories. I have a feeling that if you like JLC and you want something that's just a little bit off the beaten path, even for that company, this Jezger Lecoult Master World Geographic 41.5 millimeters in stainless steel, abundantly complicated, beautifully composed, just may be the watch you want.